This painting is called Work. If you like it, consider subscribing after you like or leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it. I've had a similar idea as this concept sketch in my head. I feel like it's very familiar to me for some reason. That's why I say that. It wasn't until now I could bring the vision to form and then to life in this painting. During the process of redrawing the concept sketch on the canvas, I struggled a lot. So much so, I almost gave up and went with a different concept altogether. As I feel with a lot of my paintings, I could have stopped way before I actually chose to, which for this one would have been about an hour and a half in, because I don't think anyone but me would really know the difference. However, I know the difference, so I kept overpainting. As you can see, or will see, if you've seen my other videos, it's become a habit after I sign off the canvas with my stamp. I've kept painting anyway. <laughs> after I sign off, you know, that should really be the end of it, but I, I just can't stop. I always see more areas to flesh out, fix, things to balance and tweak. In the end, it pretty much is as I envisioned it to be, and like what I, I, sh I strive for now in my work. There is a sort of playlist for this painting. Even I mean, it just I mean, upon conception, it was an, it was immediately Janis Joplin, "Work Me, Lord," and then after, which was today, because I conceptualized it yesterday, "Why" by Skinny Living, "Work Song" by Hozier, "To Make You Feel My Love," Adele, "This Is Where I Sleep," Am Emily Sanday, um, "Sleep Like a Child," Joss Stone, "Give Up." FKA Twigs, Liability, Lord. I've also, I also, during the process of this painting, I kept thinking of my own writing. Um, they, they're lyrics, but also sort of poems, because without context, that's, I think, how they read. I don't know what piece of mine it's from exactly, because back when I wrote it, I, re I worked and reworked a lot of pieces so many times, I, I really can't properly remember. Plus, I just have a shit memory. <laughs> Anyway, it goes like, you shame my pride, got me bleeding inside in the open you can't hide the purity in your eyes, blinded like a deer in headlights, they wrote it in your blood, when you going to give up? That's like a fragment that I can remember, and it comes up actually in my mind quite often, <laughs> hauntingly in a way. One I can remember from a more recent project, Dark Metaphors Composed to Pieces, which I put out in October. Um, I hope it's not a fever dream to you, some phase you're going through because I can't wake up, all my games are dark. And in retrospect, as always, the deer in the headlights part really hits because I cried while I was painting this towards the end. I also cried while I worked on my last painting as well. It's hard to see through tears if you don't know. Great, excellent, but it's not unlike headlights at night. They have that same sort of like blurry effect. And the, it did slow me down a little bit. My eyes still hurt. They're very puffy. They ache a lot. Now, I'll, I'll be random. Into art politics, I watched a Vice video with Basquiat's sisters. It made me happy that they were advocating for him in a way, and like for his legacy, because people don't really respect the dead, and especially artists. Like, their work like skyrockets in value, and it's just like every vulture is going to go <laughs> which is like it's everybody's nose diving straight for it it's disgusting they said something i said in a video a while back about how his success only further created like isolation for him i think i used the word alienation in the video i did a while back it can happen to any artist but basquiat from my reading sort of had a slogan sign off when he did graffiti which i think he did graffiti prior to like getting into galleries but also maybe concurrently um it was samo s-a-m-o for short for like the same old shit and a tashin book about him it details samo and how he created it with a friend as a means to represent himself in a way that he didn't think anyone else could, which is, you know, obviously you should represent yourself if you can and you have the ability. They wanted to put an end to how they put it, playing at art. It was meant to critique consumerism 
because he saw himself being exploited by highbrow society, like everything he did and like his life, like the stylization, it was it was ornamental to he didn't say it, but it was it was most likely white society. And I feel like even after he's dead, that has still continued to happen. And I think Jay-Z did something kind of similar to that, where it's like, mm, Ross Cat would not have probably fucked with Jay-Z. It's just my take. And that sort of summarizes the issue. I think most black artists, regardless of what art form they do have, black success is different because black success is sort of capped off innately just because you're black and music and music history at least in particular there was it's a it's a really good example originally black genres of music weren't even seen as music and I think that applies from like soul to rap because I think LL Cool J talked about it like yeah I don't have money for music but it's because I didn't really know that my work was valuable (laughs) you know no one knew that it like the industry would evolve into what it is now and black people really weren't empowered you know, to do the, do it themselves. That's why, okay, I'm really going off the rails now. I really love Millie Jackson because Millie Jackson was her own manager in the 70s. And she talked about how hard it was to stand out. She's like, there were so many black soul singers. I had to be raunchy. I had to do the most. And she talked about even though she was touring and making money off of her music and like managing herself and like owning everything that she did, She's like, I still actually have a regular nine to five job I could return to if this music thing does not work out. Back to what I was saying. I have notes. I stick to notes most of the time, but I can't always do that. It took other people sort of coming in with like black music and saying that this is valuable and this is profitable and this is something you can make money off of. So it's not hard to see why they were taken advantage of, but it's like up until a certain point, everything that you did was looked down upon it's no wonder that like once you get into a place where you're like oh I could actually do something with this that you're kind of like I don't really know how to (laughs) I don't really know how to move and the part of the Basquiat video that really hurt me was like when he they said that he did come home after he had like left when he was 17 and it was to tell his dad that he had made it but it's it was a it's saddening to me because like he wasn't just like proving himself to his dad that like art was a career he was also like proving it to the world He couldn't just be an artist because he was black, well, Haitian and Puerto Rican, and upscale white spaces, the blackness that was reflected in his work wasn't received well. That was like the point of a lot of criticism that I think his work got. So he was kind of at odds with the world that he like really wanted to, you know, thrive in. To me, I'll think I've made it when I can, I can Google my own natal chart. FKA Twigs made a tweet years ago, back when I was on Twitter, that had a similar tone to what Basquiat meant. She said something like, we are unicorns and people like to pet us. Then it was something at the end about like how people don't care how unicorns feel or the things that they experience. Unicorns are a very interesting choice. <laughs> if they were real, which is debatable, you know, respectfully debatable please. Giraffes fight with their necks. Unicorns would most likely stab each other. Like, imagine that fantasy. (laughs) Anyway, I've been watching so many videos about artists and art movements. It's also interesting to me that European artists were influenced so heavily by Japanese art of the Edo period. It was mentioned in the anime Samurai Shamalu, which is one of the few anime that I really like. I hate the ending, but I really love the anime. Um, in that one, it's it did bring up that Vincent Van Gogh was one person in particular who was very much influenced by the Edo art period. I was I was really surprised it was true. And they've said in other videos that I've seen that European artists like Gustav Klimt, um, Schiele, Schiele, I don't know how to say his name. He was Austrian. He had the same similar, similar like lanky, distorted style. Um, Audrey Beardsley. That other artist, I cannot remember his name, Art Nouveau, he's very Art Nouveau. They all reflect the Edo art style or like their exposure to it in their own way. And I'm curious, even though like this theme of like, I don't know, uh, exotification, I'm curious if European 
artists who saw the Edo period art were drawn to it because it was like, oh, this is exotic. This is sort of forbidden because some of the Edo art was like sexual or like lewd, provocative. So when the European artists adapted it into their art and or like reflected the inspiration, it was sort of taboo. But also like that's what that's what like was the spark of it in the first place. And also with the expressionist video I watched, they said something similar where it was like Germans were exposed to African textile art or like the mass. And that's where they got the idea to do like, I guess a lot of the bluntness, I guess the crudeness, the primitive aspects of it were derived from African things. And I was like, that makes sense because in Europe, nothing really looked like that up until that point. So those are just my thoughts. I ramble, but I think it had a point. If you take anything away from this, it is art, truly art.